morning, good morning. It is your boy Jay Global back at it again for Not Many Noble, reading the Bible through in 22 with you. It is November 16th. That means it is the 320th day that we have been reading the Bible together in chronological order from the beginning uh, up until Acts. We're in Acts uh, at the moment. And out of the World English Bible Translation, it is in the public domain, it is royalty-free, it is something that we can use to our heart's desire. It is also National Fast Food Day, it is National Button Day, it is Clarinet Day. National Button Day, huh? Hmm, how about that? How about that? And National Education Support Day? Hmm. Oh, look at that. In 2001, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone was released. Estonia declared sovereignty from the USSR back in 1988. National Educational Support Professionals Day, that's what it is. National Button Day. It is in 1938. Button collecting is an organized hobby. Novice novice and advanced button collectors. All right. Well, we're picking up back in Acts 17. I think I read a little bit too long, but here is um, Paul at the in Athens. Remember, Paul's in Athens and he's waiting for Silas and Timothy. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw the city full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who met him. So he would go talk to people. He would talk to the religious and the irreligious, I guess, or maybe the blasphemous. <laughs> maybe, no, that's not right. That's not the idolatrous. The idolatrous. There we go. He didn't let him, he didn't say like, oh, you, you, you've got your own, you've got your own beliefs here. Uh, clearly all roads lead to the same place. So you're good. He also didn't say, who am I to uh, tell you that what you believe is wrong? That's not the Bible. That is not Paul. That is not the gospel. It can be something, but it's not that. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who met him. He certainly wasn't hiding. He wasn't ignoring people. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also were conversing with him. Some said, what does this babbler want to say? So if you're going to do this, if you're going to go out, if you're going to go talk to people, be prepared for the name calling. Be prepared for people to look down upon you. That's okay. It comes with the territory. Others said he seems to be advocating foreign deities because he preached Jesus and the resurrection. They took hold of him and brought him to the Areopagus saying, may we know what this new teaching is, which you are speaking about? For you bring certain strange things to our ears. We want to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the strangers living there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Now, I don't think that's, I mean, that's like a figure of speech, right? That's not saying that that's all they did. They didn't eat, they didn't drink, they didn't go to the bathroom. No, but that's, that's what they were about. I and mean, that's what they were about in the Areopagus. Paul stood in the middle of the Areopagus and said, You men of Athens, I perceive perceive that you are very religious in all things. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I also found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship in ignorance, I announce to you. The God who made the world and all things in it, he, being Lord of the heaven and earth, doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. He isn't served by men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he himself gives to all life and breath and all things. He made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the surface of the earth, having determined appointed seasons and the boundaries of their dwellings, that they should seek the Lord, if perhaps they might reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each of us. That is the God of the Bible. Anything that speaks to the contrary is untrue. It is untrue. From one blood, every nation of men, the Lord made the world and all things in it. He is Lord of heaven and earth. He is not in a temple. He is not served by men's hands. That's him. That is the God that we seek. That is the God that we serve.
For in him we live, move, and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are also his offspring. Being then the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, engraved by art and design of man. The times of ignorance therefore God overlooked, but now he commands that all people everywhere should... What? Well, if you look around Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and talk to friends, even well-meaning religious friends or quote-unquote Christian friends, professing Christian friends, what should we do? Well, you should find yourself. You should embrace who you are. You should learn to love yourself. You should uh, find out, uh, find yourself. You should be kind to others. You should... Uh, right? There's a lot of different things that are top of the list, top of the list, depending on where they're at. But for Paul, it's this, people everywhere should repent because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained, of which he has given assurance to all men in that he has raised him from the dead. Who is this? This is the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Jesus Christ that is coming back to judge the living and the dead. And the, the evidence, the assurance is that the Lord Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. You too will rise from the dead to be judged, to be judged. And he's saying that's coming. So we have to repent. You have to repent. That judgment is coming. Repent. Now, when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, but others said, we want to hear you again concerning this. Thus, Paul went out from among them, but certain men joined with him and believed among whom also was Dionysius, 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 <laughs> Dionysius, the Areopagite and a woman named Damaris and others with them. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, Dion. Messing your name up, bro. Messing your name up. <laughs> After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. He found a certain Jew named Aquila, a man of Pontus by race, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. He came to them, and because he practiced the same trade, he lived with them and worked, for by trade they were tent makers. That's the saying, right, that um, I'm going to be a tent maker, meaning I'm going to preach the gospel and I'm going to be a bivocational pastor or preacher. I'm going to provide for my own needs by working and then use those, uh, use those funds to preach the gospel. That, that was kind of Paul's view here. I'm not saying, but he's also, right? He also, we read it before, the laborer is worthy of his wages. and We don't muzzle the ox while they're treading out the grain type of thing. Okay. So we think the first letter to the Thessalonians was written at this time or near this time, right? Because this is where the, in the chronology, here it comes. Here comes the letter of first Thessalonians from our chronological reading list. So let's jump into it. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the assembly of Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We always give thanks to God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and perseverance of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father. We know, brothers, loved by God, that you are chosen and that our good news came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much assurance. You know what kind of men we showed ourselves to be among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all who believe in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you, the word of the Lord has been declared not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith toward God has gone out, so that we need not to say anything. For they themselves report concerning us what kind of a reception we had from you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. <laughs> 
For you yourselves know, brothers, our visit to you wasn't in vain, but having suffered before and been shamefully treated, as you know, at Philippi, we grew bold in, in our God to tell you the good news of God in much conflict. For our exhortation is not of error, nor of uncleanness, nor in deception, but even as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the good news, so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who tests our hearts. For Neither were we at any time found using words of flattery, as you know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness, nor seeking glory from men, neither from you nor from others, when we might have claimed authority as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother cherishes her own children. Even so, affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not the good news of God only, but also our own souls, because you had become very dear to us. For you remember, brothers, our labor and travail for working night and day, that we might not burden any of you. We preach to you the good news of God. You are witnesses with God. How lowly, how holy, sorry, righteously and blamelessly we behaved ourselves toward you who believe. As you know, we exhorted, comforted, and implored every one of you, as a father does his own children, to the end that you should walk worthily of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. For this cause, we also thank God without ceasing, that when you received from us the word of the message of God, you accepted it, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God which also works in you when you believe. I'm sorry, also works in you who believe. For you, brothers, became imitators of the assemblies of God, which are in Judea in Christ Jesus. For you also suffered the same things from your own countrymen, even as they did from the Jews, who killed both the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and drove us out and don't please God and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they may be saved to fill up their sins always. But wrath has come on them to the other uttermost. But we brothers being bereaved of you for a short season in presence, not in heart, tried even harder to see your face with great desire because we wanted to come to you. Indeed, I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us for what is our hope, our joy, or crown of rejoicing. Isn't it even you before our Lord Jesus at his coming? For you are our glory and our joy. Therefore, when we couldn't stand it any longer, we thought it good to be left behind at Athens alone and sent Timothy, our brother and God's servant in the good news of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith that no one would be moved by these afflictions. For you know that we are appointed to this task. For most certainly when we were with you, we told you beforehand that we are to suffer affliction, even as it happened, and you know. For this cause I also, when I couldn't stand it any longer, sent that I might know your faith for fear that by any means the tempter had tempted you and our labor would have been in vain. But when Timothy came just now to us from you and brought us glad news of your faith and love and that you have good memories of us always, longing to see us, even as we also long to see you. For this cause, brothers, we were comforted over you in all our distress and affliction through your faith. For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. For what thanksgiving can we render again to God for you? For all the joy with which we rejoice for your sakes before our God, night and day, praying exceedingly that we may see your face and may perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. May the Lord make you to increase and abound in love toward one another and toward all men, even as we also do toward you. To the end he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Finally then, brothers, we beg and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that you received from us, that as you received from us, how you ought to walk and to please God that you abound more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in sanctification and honor, not in the passion of lust, even as the Gentiles who don't know God, that no one should take advantage of and wrong a brother or sister in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as also we forewarned you and testified. For God called us not for uncleanness, but in sanctification. Therefore, he who rejects this doesn't reject man, but God, who has also given his Holy Spirit to you. That's a lot about sexual immorality. And it looks like not a dang thing changed, right? I mean, this is the same thing that we face today. The question over sexual immorality, it's never gone away. It's never gone away. Therefore, he who rejects this doesn't reject man, but God, who has also given his Holy Spirit to you. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that one write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. For indeed you do it toward all the brothers who are all in Macedonia or who are in all Macedonia. 
But we exhort you, brothers, that you abound more and more and that you make it your ambition to lead a quiet life and to do your own business and to work with your own hands, even as we instructed you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside and may have need of nothing. But we don't want you to be ignorant, brothers, concerning those who have fallen asleep so that you don't grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we tell you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will in no way precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with God's trumpet. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So apparently they were, some some of them were distressed about the people who had died before them. But concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need that anything be written to you. For you yourselves know well that the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. And they were worried about that as well. So have we been at times in our lives, right? For when they are saying peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come on them, like birth pains on a pregnant woman. Then they will in no way escape. But you, brothers, aren't in darkness that the day should overtake you like a thief. You are all children of light and children of the day. We don't belong to the night nor to darkness. So then let's not sleep as the rest do, but let's watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep in the night, and those who are drunk are drunk in the night. But since we belong to the day, let's be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God didn't appoint us to wrath, but to the obtaining of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, exhort one another and build each other up even as you also do. But we beg you brothers to know those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to respect and honor them in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. We exhort you brothers, admonish the disorderly, encourage the faint hearted, support the weak, be patient at all or toward all. See that no one returns evil for evil to anyone, but always follow after that which is good for one another and for all. Always rejoice, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus toward you. Don't quench the spirit. Don't despise prophecies. Test all things and hold firmly that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Excuse me. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who will also do it. Brothers, pray for us. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. I solemnly command you by the Lord that this letter be read to all the holy brothers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. I know a little bit longer today. A little bit longer, but uh, let's go ahead and let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this letter uh, from Paul to the Thessalonians, and we receive it and we obey uh, as it as it commanded that this letter be read to all the holy brethren, which we consider ourselves to be a part of. We consider ourselves to be uh, imitating, imitating Paul and Silas and Timothy uh, only as they imitate you. And we um, receive the authority of Paul as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray that you please have mercy on us, guide us and direct us. Give us grace to do these things, to always rejoice, to pray without ceasing, to give thanks in everything, to not quench the spirit, to not despise prophecies, to test all things, to abstain from every form of evil. And we pray that you would please, that you would please do this, that our whole spirit, soul, and body would be preserved blameless to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that if we fall asleep or die beforehand, that we would uh, go, go courageously across the River Jordan. And uh, I, I pray also that you would give us grace to abstain from sexual immorality, to control our bodies in sanctification and in honor. Um, and to use our body for sanctification, not for uncleanness. And this is rough for a lot of us in a lot of different places. We're all in different places. Uh, Unhappy marriages, happy marriages, single life, um, in a a lot of different pain, turmoil, distress, uh, and longing, longing for uh, uh, intimate relationships, um, 
sometimes too much, and sometimes we make too much of um, intimate relationships and how they define us and how we view ourselves based on them. But uh, there's certainly a longing in many of our hearts and souls for partnership and um, companionship and and um, and sexual relationships. And Lord, we pray that you would please sustain us. Give us wisdom because we don't have all the answers. We don't know. Don't know exactly. Some things seem to be clear, but they require the clarity and focus of a partner. <laughs> Sometimes we don't have that. And I pray that you would please have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy on us and give us grace to lead a quiet life, to do our own business, to work with our own hands, um, and that we would be, this would be pleasing unto you. Have mercy on us, we pray, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Show notes, notmanynoble.com. Email, notmanynoble at gmail.com. You can get a hold of me. Uh, and uh, that's it. Yep. Thank you for listening. And I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.